Hey, what's going on everyone? It's David Palmer, Leo King, and we are here live for Deep Astrology, your weekly astrology forecast for the week of December 3rd through the 9th of 2019. Thanks so much for being a part of HighVibe.tv, of course, where you get Deep Astrology in its full form and content by being a subscriber. We want to thank everybody throughout the weekend for being part of the Black Friday and Cyber Monday aspects and all the new subscribers. And of course, all you out there in YouTube world, thanks so much for always just supporting HighVibe.tv and of course, all the other content that I put here, here on the Leo King channel. And of course, if you've never watched the show before, this is where I'm going to channel the astrology and then go deep into the charts, which are brought to you by Astro Gold, which you can get on iOS, Android, and of course you can get on any Mac device. And if you're on PC, make sure that you get that on Solar Fire. And of course, the show is also sponsored by the W Bros. Check out this awesome collection for horoscope and zodiac signs for jewelry, rings, necklaces, gold, silver, and of course in rose gold, but it's sterling silver actually you can get. Make sure that you check it out now and get my discount code LK10. And it's so awesome because you can wear your zodiac ring, get it in any of those different metals, and of course it's all in necklace form too. And 10% of it goes to help out people dealing with anxiety and depression, which is such an important subject for me in my own personal life and my own journey of anxieties and panic disorder that I've gone through. So 10% of those proceeds go to help people and organizations that deal with that. Well, everyone, we are here. Welcome to Jupiter and Capricorn. <laughs> you know, Jupiter and Capricorn has dry humor in it, so you might get a little dry humor out of this today. And I'm sure if you've been following me on Instagram, you've been hearing me talking about pirates and compression of time. Well, we're almost to that point. The sun's still in Sagittarius, though, so there is something to say about that there is still some breathing room right now, even though we are in a trash compactor in Capricorn. We got Jupiter, we've got the South Node, we've got Venus, we've got Pluto and Saturn. And Pluto and Saturn are three degrees away, so that's a lot of energy. The two biggest planets, the most intense planet, Venus and the South Node, all within 21 degrees. <laughs> that's a lot, especially when you get big old Santa Claus in the mix with that, or a big humpback whale. Woo! That's a lot of energy in there. But you know, this is a time where I know it can feel stressful and the stress is around reality. It's like a tidal wave coming at us of reality about the choices we need to make in our life, the things that we need to step into more. And now that Jupiter is here, we got to remember that because the sun is in Sagittarius, it's Jupiter's sign. Well, where's Jupiter? It's in Capricorn. So we're dealing with much more of a Capricornian Jupiter energy with the sun here, but the sun is still in Sag, so it's still about finding the optimism, searching for and seeing in the belief systems about that there still are so many opportunities available, but a lot of it has been shown. That's what Jupiter in Sag was all about. Now Jupiter's in Capricorn, so it's a whole different story now, and Jupiter is about starting new stories. And this story does have a little bit of pirates to it since Mars is in Scorpio and it's determined and it's got its energy of what it wants and it's in sextile to Venus and Capricorn this week. So I'm going to say it first. Relationships, projects, things that you have been shown with Jupiter and Venus that met in Sag just weeks ago. It's time for you to stake your claim because at any moment, there is a pirate that will say that it, look at this area that wasn't taken. And I'm saying this because with the North Node in Cancer and with the sun this week that was square Neptune and Pisces, there's something to say about those that are kind of sitting behind and waiting for things to happen and those that are taking action. And action is a big deal, especially as Jupiter's gonna square Chiron this week in Aries, that, you know what, those that are just kind of limping, waiting, there may be somebody else that might take your spot. That happens in relationships, that happens in projects, that happens in stepping into things. And there's something about integrity that comes up about not integrity of like whether it's right or wrong. I mean, that is part of this, but the deeper part is whether or not you're showing up to take advantage and take yourself to a higher position in your life by what is in front of you that you really want to be a part of in your life or that you don't. Also, it's about narrowing the field. With all this energy in Capricorn, with the sun in Sagittarius, there is a big story to tell, but we got to narrow the story down. You know, I've never liked any of those children books where they gave me like five stories. I was like, come on, these three suck. Maybe I liked one, but I like this one the best. 
Or whenever, you know, you used to, I used to watch Disney cartoons a lot, and it would be like four different stories. I'd always find the one I liked the most, and the other three would be like, Mom, fast forward it to that story, please. I don't want to watch Goofy. I don't want to watch Donald Duck. I want to watch. Well, actually, I like Donald Duck, so yeah. Go to Donald Duck. <laughs> so there's something to say about too many stories, and one story doesn't really, you know, work in Capricorn. It's about that big story, that major story, that story that gets you to the ultimate goal in place. And this week's very interesting because Mercury comes out of its shadow period finally by the end of this week. And we are going to have this while the Sun is squaring Neptune, while Neptune and Venus make a sextile. We have Mars and Venus too, so Venus is getting some really good aspects this week. Really good. And even though it's in Capricorn, yeah, but you know what? It's about who takes the spot. Because Capricorn is about who is the CEO and who's the employee? Who is and where are you at in the hierarchy system? And I know the South Node's here, so we gotta look at the North Node and go, okay, okay, yeah, life is not all about reality and we wanna be comfortable and so forth. But again, this is gonna bring up control issues about when you feel like things are comfortable or when you, but they're not gonna show up that way. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you all. I am reshooting this for the first time in my life. In my life of doing deep astrology, I've never had to reshoot it, but we had a sound issue. But I am still showing up with integrity, and I'm going to take the position to show up and do the show. For the people out there that watch it, rely on it, pay for it for the full part, and for those that are on YouTube, that even though if they just get the audio on the chart part, this front part, they really look forward to it. Somebody else, if I don't show up with it, might just come up with a crazy idea to come up and copy the show and go do it. Or somebody's doing it in their own form and they're gonna go watch that person. That's Capricorn. And to teach you it through my own truth and what's happened in my own life here today, cannot be any more clear, or I cannot describe this any better in life. Guess what, that relationship you really want, that you're trying to play with, or whatever, you're beating around the bush, you don't make action on it, you keep playing on the sidelines, somebody else is gonna take it. That's where pirate energy comes in, because when you get Mars and, and Scorpio, you get Mercury coming out of a shadow. Oh, the map is pointing towards the buried treasure right here. And when you give a map, with buried treasure to a bunch of pirates, they are running to their ships and they are gonna go. They are not sitting behind and being like, you know what, I wanted it to come on Thursday at 4 p.m. when I feel like I have enough energy to do that. That's all of this subconscious Neptune sitting in the background and not making the magical quest of your life. Magic is available everywhere. I love Pisces Sag. It's one of my favorite Sun Moon squares. It's one of my favorite Sun Neptune squares. I don't like the Gemini one because we feel like we're going insane. Because <laughs> we lose the fundamental parts of factual reality. At least this is playing with higher belief systems, stories, and more importantly, quests and, and bigger visions. Because Jupiter rules Neptune's home of Pisces, and it rules Sag's home. So when you're getting a double whammy of Neptune and the sun, and you're getting it in signs that both rule Jupiter, it's a Jupiter thing. And where's Jupiter? Capricorn. And so I really want people to know that this week, with Mercury out of shadow, Things are moving forward fast. Mars is at full speed. And when we go into the charts, you'll see, you're gonna wanna take advantage of this time, especially from now until we come to pretty much the eclipse, the first one. Because once we start the new year, before the second eclipse, the lunar eclipse on January 10th, Mars will move into Sag at that time. And you are not gonna see Mars in a strong position until 2021. Sure, it comes into Aries, shadow, squaring Jupiter-Pluto, then it will come back and square Saturn when it comes back into Capricorn later in 2020. And it's going to take a while for Mars to finally get out of shadow. And that's at the end of 2020. 
So this is Mars at its strongest for the next year. And it's going to be aligning over these next couple weeks with Saturn, Pluto. It's going to be aligning with Venus this week. So take the goods that, that, that God and Santa Claus have shown you in your life. Because if you don't, somebody's going to be there to take it. And this is where we have to speak our most honest truth in Scorpio. And with it out of shadow, during a sun square Neptune, whatever is hidden, whatever that you are sensitive about, whatever you feel called towards, it's got to be thrown out there in the open to see whether or not it sticks or not. I mean, you know, it's a little bit Italian. You know, you got to throw the pasta on the wall and see if it sticks. If it doesn't stick, well, hey, at least you know. One thing about Capricorn, especially with Jupiter now, is it, with the square to Chiron, is there becomes all these really weird identification issues about, you know, what is my quest or what is the right thing and insecurity, especially with the Sun square Neptune with Jupiter square Chiron. You've got to get over those insecurities because, you know what, at the end of the day, yes, the North Node's in ca and Cancer, so bring water with you. <laughs> like, bring the comfy clothes that you need. But that doesn't mean not show up. Because I think that a lot of people in the whole entire astrology community are getting really lost and just saying, it's only about North Node and Cancer only. It's a, it's a system that loops. And sure, we need to have both. It's a balance of both. So this is not cookies and tea only time. This is where you also have to show up. You also have to, I don't like the word take advantage, but that's what Capricorn does because a hierarchy system, you have to take the ladder up. It shoots in ladders right now. And you got to keep climbing right now. And that tidal wave, it doesn't matter if you try to escape because this is where people quit. The Sun square Neptune, Jupiter in Capricorn square Chiron in Aries, as you'll see in the charts, we have not seen this in our lives and we've never seen it with, nobody even knew that Chiron was in Aries, remember, the last time that Jupiter was in Capricorn. It was, nobody knew that Chiron existed. So, we've never seen this before in our lives. We've actually seen it, but we didn't know we were aware of it. But this is the first time we're aware of it. And you get a lot of quitters at this point. You get a lot of people who just are like, the truth is anybody quitting or not showing up is just afraid to show their Stamina. There's no excuses with Mars and Scorpio. Why do you think Mars and Scorpio is dignified? Because it has extra in the tank. And on the first recording, I went really deep into that because Mars and Scorpio has the will to want it no matter what. I will stay up for three days with no caffeine, no nothing, if it is for that thing in my life I want desperately, and then I know I'm going to get there. There's no excuses with Mars and Scorpio. It either has it or it doesn't. None. And that's why people think I'm a crazy motherfucker that I show up every day for eight years and I'll even refilm Deep Astrology twice and go do another show right now and re-edit it and re-upload it and go do more and do it daily and get in my car and drive all the way to LA and drive back here tomorrow and do it all over again. That's... Who's going to win in this crazy world that we are now entering into? And that is what the spiritual community doesn't want to hear because it is all Capricorn and Scorpio. That's what we're moving into. And with Chiron and Aries, this is where people's insecurities about stepping forward, taking action, identifying, and especially this week, we get a moon in Taurus with Uranus, with all this beautiful energy. It's who's got the worth, who's got the value, who's ready to make their life better, and who's ready to seize on all the beautiful opportunities, or who's just going to sit around and wait, and wait, and wait, and wait. And then when somebody else takes that position, now you are at the bottom more. Now you can take the second position underneath that, and you wait longer, you take the position underneath that. Socks. Life is a weird thing. You know, when you buy tickets for a new movie, they sell out pretty quick. 
Sometimes you have to get the nosebleeds or sometimes you're right in front of the screen. That's just kind of how the cookie crumbles, but it's about who's the one that takes advantage of the early worm, right? If you try going fishing in, at noon, good luck. Those guys were on the pier or on their boat at five in the morning and they already did all the fish when they were hungry and they're gone. What? That's why you never see anybody fishing in the middle of the day unless you're trolling and you're out there and you're catching bigger fish like marlin or anything like that. But when you're at a pier or you're on a lake, you do that early in the morning. So the positive is whatever is holding you back from your greatest vision and dream, the treasure map is there. You have done the Mercury retrograde. You've done the Mercury shadow period. You've done it all in Scorpio. Mercury's been in Scorpio for months, months, all November and into October. I don't know if you remember that. What are, you, what are you waiting on? Mars is going to go to the second deacon, be making great aspects to Venus. Venus is going to be with Neptune. Venus is going to be with Mars. I mean, does it get any better? I don't think so. But it is for those that really are going to see on their own merit what they want to capitalize on and what they don't. And fear comes up with Mercury and Scorpio because with Jupiter squaring over to Chiron and Aries, there is that fear of missing out. But you're the one choosing to miss out. You're the one because we're dealing with Neptune and we're dealing with the North Node in Cancer. And I'm sorry to say that Saturn rules the, the whole entire astrology. We are in the month of the rat, by the way. And we are about to enter the year of the rat next month when we enter it on January 25th. And I'm sorry to say, too, that the rat... Is the first one and it wins. So there's no more time for sitting in the background. You know, and to be honest with you, we live in, anybody who's watching this, 90% of you are in a first world country. Like, you've had a really nice run of being able to relax and chill and watch your TV and make your Instagram stories and just live your, like, chilled out life. Well, the tidal wave is here of what you step into and whether you go on a quest and who's showing up because the boats are all taken off. And it's about those that get paid, put in the work. And I know that, yeah, Capricorn's a long journey, but to be honest with you, you have to be on the journey. And a lot of people focus more on, like, well, I'm on the journey and it's a long one. So, you know, I hear this one a lot from clients and just been my, I've been doing astrology a long fucking time where I'm just in it 24 seven. And the number one thing I always hear from people that aren't on the mark is, well, it's a long journey. It's like, yeah, it's because that's your excuse of why you're not stepping forward now is you're trying to buy yourself more time to climb higher, to step into the role. Because one thing that Capricorn wants is it doesn't want to be, I'm going to hire you because your resume looks good. It wants somebody to tell it why it's meant for it. That's what destiny is. That's what God and destiny is. God doesn't want to just tell you your destiny. God also wants you to tell God what the destiny is. That's the most refreshing thing that God could ever hear, ever, is when you see it, you know it, and you prove it. And you have, that's what integrity is. It's not a role model. It's not some, you know, what everybody else has done that got the award. It's the one that goes the farthest, that knows that it's meant for the position in life, in the quest, and that proves to God and that shows God and that shows up and puts everything that it has into it. And more importantly, it makes decisions. It doesn't sit on the fence. God doesn't want you to keep waiting on the fence on whether or not you believe in God or not. Right? I'm sure when it comes to romantic partnerships, especially once you're in a relationship, it's not fun to hear when somebody says, like, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of wanting to mean this, but I'm kind of not. The way that you advance now in life is literally every corner you need to think of it as a border patrol stop. 
and whether or not you show your passport that you're meant for this road and that you want to come in and move on and to the next step and then move on and you have to be prepared that's what Capricorn is, you have to be prepared and you have to see the huge vision of the road that's narrow and the valley that takes you there because if you're going to be distracted by the pretty little birds and by all these things, they're great in life, they're, they're important but they're not, that's, you've had plenty of time with that that's what Jupiter and Sag was about, square Neptune, you just went through a really weird reality, you just went and played lots of parallel universes, you just went and watched lots of crazy weird shows, you just went and did all that, you just went and had your time out, even though it felt like there was no time out because Saturn and Pluto were meeting up in Capricorn, but they didn't, and now they're about to. And it's all about, at the end of the day, who shows up, and the last thing that I just want to say here is that with Chiron stopped, with Jupiter squaring it, and with a moon in Taurus over Uranus, not only is it when the pirates get the map of where to go and they take advantage of it, it's about the understanding that time is precious. And instead of looking at it like who's going to take some position that I know I'm meant for, but are you too, I don't even want to say lazy, but more about that you're too sensitive because you're doubting yourself or you're afraid. And all this is saying is that you have to know your value and your worth because Uranus is going to get ready to try in Jupiter after the Jupiter square Chiron. We have to go through that first. That it will pay you and take you in great places by the position in which you're at and how high you go. And that's just the damn truth. And so this week, there's the most amazing treasure I've ever seen in my life in the astrology or completely not seeing it, denying yourself of it, and I don't know, I guess sitting around and hanging out in your closet trying to clean it and feeling that you organized something and that you got that one done and you've already done it before. This is beyond, this is where you must believe, this is what must you take the greatest beautiful vision of your life and make it real by owning that place. Because in Capricorn, it's all about who knows who, but it's more important that you get there by being your own little politician now. That you take every meeting, that you take every opportunity, and you see what's there, and you open the door to it, and you see if you're, if you're not going to show up, if you're not going to sit in the seat, if you're not going to be at the meeting, if you're not going to be at the place, if you're not going to show up to the job, if you're not going to show up to the relationship, if you're not going to show up on the date, if you're not going to show up with the communication, if you're not going to show up in anywhere in your life fully, you ain't going to get nada. I really truly believe in spirituality, looking at people and seeing like, who's showing up? Because let's be honest, they talk about the population being too big. They talk about the climate being affected by humans. They talk about all this stuff. I don't know if all that's real. But there is something to say now that whether we want to use this all as a great way of understanding that we have to show up now in our lives and we have to do something and we cannot be just sitting around waiting for shit to happen for us when it was already shown up in your face and you've got to show up yourself. And that's the damn truth. And you don't come to this channel to get fluff. And to be honest with you, as a Jupiter and Capricorn myself, I could tell you that I did not get here by fucking sitting down every day. I did not get here by sitting in my bed every day. I did not get here by waiting. I did not wait in waiting rooms to get here in my life. I took deals that didn't work out at least plans for him. I went to every opportunity in my life to advance my life to get here. Every single one. Even if they did not work out. And those were nights where I said, hey, sorry buddies, I know you guys are at the bar drinking. I'm not going. I got this meeting. It could be something big. And if I didn't do all that, I would not be here now. So, 
I want to end with something positive before we go to these charts. Even though I think what I gave you is actually extremely positive because to be honest with you, it's pretty simple. But I know it's not simple for a lot of people out there because this energy, you start to look at competition when you get in Capricorn. You start to look at how there's bigger people, right? Like bigger corporations and bigger this and all this stuff. Why don't you just show up and let the magic happen? Because this positive of the sun is still in Sagittarius, we've got weeks still, folks, where anything's possible, where you got to believe, where the gifts have been shown up, and you got to start exploring what those gifts are. And you got to start showing up and showing up with some sort of dedication, some sort of integrity to them. Even if the gift's shitty, right? On Christmas, you don't look at your grandma and go, Grandma, what a shitty gift. You at least open it up. You put the paper down. You give your grandmother a nice kiss. And you tell her, thank you. I love you so much. And you move on. But for some reason, society today is so babyish and lost its touch with knowing how to handle life and how to advance in life because everybody's waiting for something else to show up to it. Why do you think socialism is on the rise? Everybody just wants a handout. And I'm sorry to say that this is not going to be a time where you're going to see handouts. The only way a handout's going to come to you is when you show up to do something from an offer that was already presented to you to explore. Because even if you get a handout, I'm going to be honest, in my life I've gotten handouts here, I've gotten, I've gotten this here. They last only for a minute. And the whole idea of comfort, like how much bank money you have in your bank account, I'm sorry to say in Capricorn, all that matters is getting up the mountain. It doesn't matter if you have a full thing of beef jerky or a full thing of water, as long as you just have enough water to get to that part to where you know you got to get to today. But we live in a, in a world, a country, in a world today, everywhere, and there's people that live in Africa and other places where they don't think about how much money is in their account or how much water is in here? Like Capricorn is just like whatever you need to get there and go. I've gotten more TV shows, gigs, jobs in my life. Man, when I was literally like taking the shoe off, you know, some shoe from four years ago and finding the, the, the fucking, what do you call it? The fucking sh the shoelace from another shoe and putting it on and putting two different socks on and at least just showing up and putting on my best self. And got me that job, that got me to that job, that got me to this thing, that got... You've got to learn shoots and ladders. But if you're not climbing any ladders right now and if there's awesome things that you feel in your heart and love that you want to do, that it's there, don't let somebody else take it from you. Because right now, it's like property. It's open season on who's going to come in with the best. And you know you're the best, but if you have that opportunity, it's right in front of you and you're not going to seize on it, somebody better will. That's in love now. That's in partnerships with business. That's in every aspect of your life. So, welcome to the ship. I hope you have a life vest on. Oh, by the way, there are no life vests on pirate ships because the last thing everybody wants to know about pirates because I've talked about that. Capricorn rules pirates because they go look for buried treasure and they will do anything for it and Mars and Scorpio with Saturn and Scorpio or any Mars Saturn thing is a pirate. Because guess what? Whatever you got to do to get there. Now, you'd think with Capricorn, no, there's no way that pirates are Capricorn. No, pirates are Capricorn with Scorpio. 
Kim Jong-un, have you looked at his chart, Capricorn Scorpio? Pirates have that edge and that willpower to go and find the treasure and they will do anything they can to get there. And this is a wide open season for pirates that are going to seize the treasure that if you ever watch a pirate movie especially, if you ever see like the British ships or the Dutch ships, they're just all like, doo, 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 doo. we're just doing this because we're kind of told to do it. But the ones that have that willpower and that will to go do it are the pirates, and the pirates always get it. And so this is open season for pirate energy. It's open season for people to just say, you know what? Nobody's taking advantage of that position. I'm going to take it. And just be ready, because in one month, it becomes the year of the metal rat. And the rat won the race. So this is coming fast. And I've been screaming this motherfucker for fucking years to people. And we're right here. And if you're going to sit any longer and wait for something to show up with this weird, twisted, demented belief system in yourself right now with Chiron Square and Jupiter, that somehow you don't deserve it, or you don't have the strength to do it, or you've been burned in the past, or all this Chiron and Aries shit, Somebody else is going to take it. And that's what's hard when I say it's like squeezing because all the planets are condensing. And the universe is recording what everybody's already been doing since Monday. That's a little creepy. And the sun and Sag is offering just a little bit of last hope and understanding and teaching but I'm sorry to say, Saturn rules the day now. And right when that sun s s rises every morning, it's followed by then Saturn on the horizon. So, you know, right when you wake up in the morning, it feels good. And then Saturn, Pluto, and all that hit in the morning. Every morning when you wake up, no matter where you're at in the world. And that sun is getting closer and closer and closer to Saturn. And we're going to get to a point to where we're going to wake up and Saturn and Pluto are going to be the one that rises in the morning above the sun. And that is coming soon. And that's when pirate season is... They've already taken everything. Because think of life like an oasis. If you were in the middle of the desert and you found an oasis, you'd be like, yeah, this is mine. It's got water. It's got everything. It's got palm trees. Well, just wait till Coca-Cola gets there. Just wait till everybody else gets there. And when you go there to get water, you got to pay $24 to get a Coca-Cola, a towel, just to go dip yourself in the pool. Oh, that's right, we are moving. I just need one second here to calm myself down. <laughs> Uh. <clears throat> Woo! You know, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I don't like to do horoscopes like this. I really don't. You know, you might all think I'm crazy, but I literally have maybe spent months in total when it comes to nights up thinking about this energy for years. Years. You can go watch on YouTube. It's for free. It's on, it's under, it's called Rising Through the Darkness. I even talk about it in Age of Deception, and that was in 2016. Just wait for 2020. Just wait for 2020. Just wait for 2020. Like... Everything that the universe has opened the spiritual community to, I think the hardest truth in all of this is that we live in reality, everybody. And the, the notion that we can just bypass reality and a system that's been in place for 
well, like I guess, I guess last Saturn Pluto, 500 years, that's just going to just disappear in one minute is impossible. Capricorn's a slow sign. And it's going to slowly erode. So the spiritual community's right, and we're all right. This is not going to be the way we're going to have to live forever. But there is something to say that before Saturn and Pluto meet, there is an eclipse with Jupiter and the South Node. And if you really think about it, that means that the final stand of the old world is going to be at its peak. And then it's not going to just go away. But if anything, we're going to have to experience it at the most heightened we've ever experienced it before. So, I have a hard time with it, just being an astrologer, because I'm not afraid to speak the truth. Because this is this moment for everybody. And you, you've, you've gotten amazing opportunities that have been shown to you. Jupiter did its job. Jupiter did its job. Why are you not stepping up is going to be the question. And we all are not stepping up in some sort of way of some opportunity or some great gift that the universe has shown us of a different journey, but it's whether or not you execute now. And with the sun and Neptune, dreams are possible. This is like where Walt Disney had to execute even after having to fire his own brother. <laughs> you know? It's just truth, or I think his brother quit, one of them. Like, dreams are possible, but at the same time, there's reality. There's bills. There's things that you got to do. And there's advancement only now. Like, cancer is where we need to aim, so the comfort is important. But the comfort to advance. The comfort that you have to do and the uncomfortable things that you have to do to get to higher comfort in life. And Capricorn rules with Saturn being here. There's too much now. We've not seen Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto since the 1280s. So, we're going to run through these charts, but uh, this is the part where if you are uh, on YouTube, this is where, um, if you want to watch the rest of the show, you can join HighVibe.tv today and subscribe, and you get access to this show and all the other shows, the daily videos, the weekly videos, and all the other awesome people on HighVibe and all their content. So check out HighVibe.tv. All right, so here we are today, Tuesday, and here we are. Let me just show you. Here's Mars at 9. You know, Mars is on my Saturn today, so you guys are feeling my Saturn and Mars pushing that hard in Scorpio. I am a motherfucking hard-ass with Scorpio. I'm sorry that you all felt that today. But there's something to say about Mars and Scorpio. Don't fuck around with it. Like, you just don't fuck around with a scorpion that literally was injected with Arnold Schwarzenegger's private steroid stash. <laughs> and it's in aspects to Venus. Now, Venus in detriment, of course. Uh, well, it's not detriment, actually, technically. It's just in Capricorn. But it's got this south node here, and Mars has been activating these nodes really intensely. And so this is saying, like, don't be afraid to step up to the things you want in your life. Because somebody else will take them soon enough. <laughs> that, that's a good way to initiate things. Competition is rampant in Capricorn. Because Capricorn rules games, especially competition, sports, like that stuff. You'd think Virgo does. Virgo is more of like kindergarten soccer or AAA, like Little League. Capricorn's professional sports competition. And so people with a lot of Capricorn or 10th house stuff, it's competition in acting, it's competition in business, it's the CEO, or are you just an employee? And so what you want right now, it's about time to start making aspects to it and going, because now the sun at 11, you got to look at that dispositor. Well, Sagittarius sun, Jupiter's the, the ruler, it's the dispositor, it's in Capricorn now. So we need to expand into starting to see where we need to show up more in our lives. What opportunities do we have that we should seize the opportunity for it to be better for us to be better for the collective too? I mean, I think a lot, there's a lot of positives in this. We got this moon here in Pisces, which is squaring the sun. 
which means that we are coming into this Tuesday and into this week with great visions of, and, and awesome aspects. But are you really prepared to let go of that insecurity or let go of that part of yourself that just wants to keep kind of waiting for things? Neptune's direct now. And Jupiter's starting to square Chiron. And, and that's where I'm talking about this Jupiter square Chiron thing. This is where this inability to take action on things is really especially messed up because, of course, Chiron is stationary. It's not moving, okay? It's going to come direct next week. And so it stopped at this one degree spot. Remember that Chiron is a very slow planet. So it stopped. It's not even a planet. It's an asteroid. And what's the most interesting to me about this chart, about coming into this week, is how we have Mars and Venus hooking up, which is amazing. But are you doing anything about it? I think that this is this dreamy aspect that we need to actually embrace. But this other aspect of like, oh, Leo King's just talking shit. It'll still be there in a week or two. I hope, I hope for your benefit it will be. There's something to say about the energy that is building up. That there's no more time for games or playing around. Jupiter square Chiron also, I'll be honest with you, deflates beliefs in people. That's why I'm telling people not to give up right now, but to show up. And it's Chiron that is throwing out these weird identifications of what you are not possible uh, to do or you can't do. That's all your projection of your own ego issue. You actually have to believe in yourself again because this is what Pluto Uranus made squares in Capricorn and in Aries. And to have now a square we have never seen since Chiron was ever discovered with Jupiter and Capricorn at its fall. This is your own ideas or identifications of things being like, I can't do this right now, or I still need to, and especially with this Neptune shit and the sun squaring Neptune and the moon here. Uh, this is you just, it's not on my time. I want to be free, and I just want to just, do, 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 do. I just want to like be a fairy right now. Go ahead and be a fairy for as long as you want to be, and then when you're ready to show up to reality, take the 17,000th number at DMV. You can be a fairy in line. Just get the fucking first number. You know what I mean? Like you can still be a fairy, but be a fairy in doing something. I'm the Leo King in the middle of doing my show, but I'm here doing the show. It doesn't mean like I just need to go run away right now into the middle of the street and be like, I'm a Leo King! I am a Leo! Yeah! I might as well do it on a fucking show! You know what I mean? Although that sounds fucking wonderful. I don't know how many people would hear me, though. That's the whole thing about Capricorn. It's about who gets attention and who does not. Who is heard and who is... Well, I like the analogy of the wolf with the sheep. It was just the other night I was watching, um, oh God. Are you a wolf or are you a sheep? Oh, oh training day with Denzel Washington, who's a motherfucking Capricorn. And he looks at Ethan Hawke, and this is the best analogy of life right now. Go watch Training Day. Ethan Hawke is a little green pea, normal L.A. city cop who's going to go try and be a narc and a narcotics agent for the L.A. Police Department and has to arrive and show up and hang out with Denzel Washington in his Monte Carlo that's on bags. And he plays him for like a fool. Has him smoke the weed, has him do it, and they set him up the whole time. And he keeps asking me, he looks, he goes, you know, this world out here, it's a bunch of wolves ready to always pounce on the sheep. And are you a wolf or are you a sheep? And he goes, if you're a sheep, why don't you go help that fucking cop right there? And he's changing some old lady's tire.
Now, it didn't work out too well for Denzel because he wasn't true of integrity. But there's something to say that if we erase just that part of that movie and we look at his career before that, he was doing his job. He just fucked up and killed a Russian because he had his ego too fucked up. But there's something to say that this is a moment in life where street smarts, Mars and Scorpio, that's why I bring up pirates. Capricorn and Scorpio is the ultimate pirate. It's edge, it's determination, and it will do whatever it can to get what it wants and find the buried treasure, baby. And Capricorn is the captain in its ship, and it's got Pluto with it. And if you think pirates, you know what? Go look up pirates. I bet you it was 1500s there was a lot of pirates around. Just saying. So... This is where you have to realize that this is pirate season out there and it's about street smarts and it's about who knows how to get what they need and what they want. And I know that sounds fucking insane in the spiritual community because you're, you're, you're going to go here on other channels. Like, it's about my crystal and it's about love and light and it's about meditation today. I think we've all heard that every day for fucking a decade or plus. But I'm here to tell you now that the spiritual community has to change the system by being part of it. Who are the people that are going to show up into the reality and make a shift for it? Period. Who are the wolves? Who are the Morpheuses? Who are going to get on the ships and go into the Matrix? That spiritual community doesn't want to go into the Matrix. Fuck the Matrix, right? Well, the only way to get rid of the Matrix is to actually change the Matrix. Because the Matrix is what's even connecting you to where you go. Let's take a look at Wednesday. All right. We got Mars there at 10, second deacon. I will let you know, as a fellow Mars and Scorpio second deacon, I can tell you that it's a powerful position to be born under. And when you see this Mars here at 10, and you see Venus at 10, you guys having issues with the... Uh, um, going to the chart? Gracias. Um, this is an amazing moment to continue to seize on the things you want in your life. It's amazing. I know I've sounded like a tyrant tonight. Think of it more like a pirate talking to you all tonight instead of a tyrant. Because if anything, this is Mars and Scorpio and Venus and Capricorn. You know, very weird energies, but also very likable. Venus in Capricorn is the, the goddess that's like, I want to raise my position in my life. I want a man or a woman or whoever who is going to take me to better places. I don't want to live in the shitter. Because believe it or not, Capricorn's the highest position. So ah, Venus does not want to live in the shitter. And Venus is on her way to hang out with Saturn and Pluto, which can grant her gateways to higher positions in her life. And so she wants a masculine energy, a Mars, that is determined enough to deliver the goods and to show up and to have that extra power and that extra will. So if you relate that to life right now, who is showing up and who's not? Who's coming out with full force? Who's not? Who's showing up to projects with everything they got and who's not? Who's taking the positions? Because one thing about Saturn is Saturn doesn't want to have to hire people. Especially with Pluto there, right? Saturn and Pluto are looking for people that get it. That are like, this is the mission. This is what needs to get done. And we don't want to have to hire. We want to like be impressed. We want to like see the honors that you show. Like we want to see that you've got the willpower and you've got it all. And with the sun in Sag... Again, you got to look at Jupiter. It's in Capricorn. So, you know, it, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a shifting of the seasons. Already. Like, gifts were already bestowed. This is where you rocket ship those gifts. This is where you access them. And with the sun at 12 degrees, it's squared the moon. It's getting ready to square Neptune. And the moon at 18 is making awesome aspects to Mercury. Remember, Mercury 
at 23 degrees, it went retrograde at 27. So we're almost over with the shadow. That's at the end of this week. But this is recovering all the last, you know, seven weeks of where you were looking deeply at what to find in your life, the treasure map. Oh, I, I wish we had a bunch of pirate stuff around. And if I put a pirate hat on, you guys would have loved this message a lot better, probably. But um, this is where the treasure map is yeah, finding it. Mars and Venus. This is awesome stuff. The, the Sag Pisces energy is my favorite. I'll be honest. For all the ladies out there, they always want to know what one of my favorite combinations is. is I love Sag Pisces. It's imaginative. It's beautiful. I don't know why. I just don't, I, I love Sag Pisces because it is both Jupiter and it's like beyond. And it's about, you know, I love Pirates of the Caribbean because they took a pirate story and made it like a fucking fantasy. Well, I'm here to tell you that you can make all your fantasies and all your dreams come true, but you got to show up and you got to put the work in. You got to do it. You know, there are people running that Pirates of the Caribbean ride going, chick, please exit the thing. Did it did it. Like Disney had to go underground and dig the fucking shit out and put the shit up, you know, to make it happen. But it's one thing to have a vision. It's another to do it. So the time of visions are over and the time of putting visions into truth and to reality are extreme. And that you have the map. The ships have taken off. But they're still within port, so you can still swim to it if you feel like you've missed some port. You can still swim to the boat. I'm telling you now, if I were to show you, if I were to like, <laughs> if I were to actually draw it. So this is the port, and right here is the exit into the ocean, okay? This is the ocean. And there's little docks. And then this is the bar where Brandy hangs out. I said, Brandy, fetch another round. If anybody knows that old song. So the big pirate ship. Okay. With Leo King and all the high vibe crew. But it's, it's called the high vibe ship because we're actually high vibe rainbow pirates. It's left. It hasn't left the port yet, but it's left the docks. It's got a map. It knows. It's got one of those magical maps, you know, where you've got to, like, use the weird compass or something to get deep. We have it, so we're like, okay, Mercury's coming out of shadow in the next couple days, so right when we get to this end of this port is right when we need to find the rest of it anyway. At least we know the trajectory now. Mercury's almost at the end of its shadow. So it's leaving, but if you're over here still sitting around going, I don't know what to do. I'm sitting in my bed every day. Get on a dock and start screaming, and maybe Craig will turn the ship around. Or if you're over here, maybe Sarah will throw a life raft out. Or maybe Dylan will teleport you with his amazing teleportation skills that he hasn't taught everybody yet, onto the boat. And Abby will probably call you another boat, and it'll be a beautiful boat, and you will get a first-class tourist ride to the boat. And Jax <laughs> is going to be a lead and debate the whole entire boat about why we should just go back and get everybody before we leave the port, which we probably would listen to him at the end of the day. Okay? So, this is a beautiful moment, actually, in life. Because it's not like you've missed the boat or anything yet. But I will be honest, you got January 12th and you've got December 26th. Depending on where you're at, it'll be 25th here on the West Coast. But you've got those dates in between where that's, that ship's out of that port and it's heading into the seas. And it's a lot harder to get a hold of anybody unless you want to get on one of my jet skis <laughs> and meet up. But even then, there's probably going to be some sort of stall or issue. I do need to replace a head bolt in one of them. So Wednesday is 
realizing that the dream is there and why don't you just start to step into those things, explore those things, whatever that imagination is and start to build it, start to create it, start to explore it. Because by Thursday, now we're starting to see Venus and Mars done. So Venus at 12 and you can see Mars here at 10. So there was a lot of great ways to take the opportunities. Seize the day. And with the sun at 13, look at that. The moon is going to be conjunct Chiron as it's going to square over to Jupiter. Thursday, wow. Not the easiest of days at the very like onset, just because the moon is going to square Jupiter for the first time in 12 years in Capricorn. Right? So the moon in Aries. But this is the first time... Gosh, I mean, I'd have to do my math, but it would have been in the 70s. Let's see, because in 1960, 1960 was Jupiter, Saturn, and Capricorn. Chiron didn't get in until 69. That means 72? So in 1972 was the last time that the moon and Chiron could have met in Aries and squared Jupiter and Capricorn. Please, somebody tell me I'm wrong. I beg you. But I bet you I'm right. 1972 was not the best years for cars, by the way. Pretty gross cars. So, this is a weird moment because it is the first time we are going to feel Jupiter square Chiron. Now, I've been going through this transit because I was born with Jupiter and Capricorn and Chiron is squaring my Jupiter. So I've been feeling it. Everything that I thought the way that it should look turned much better when I just let go of how I egoly wanted it, if that's even a word, egoly. But every time my ego thought it would be one way, I've learned to just go, as long as I'm on the trail for the longer term vision, and as long as I put my ego out of the way and realize that it's not going to really know how to identify it, but it's identified as far as what the purpose is, it all turns out great. So it's a learning to release and let go of this identification process about the deeper specifics from the identity. Instead of just looking at the basics, just look at the basic identity of what something is and just let that be explored and go towards it and show up towards it and we'll all be fine. But when you start to get too nitpicky and too deep into it all, oh my gosh, Chiron will throw you on a tizzy. And we do have the sun in fire, but there's not a lot of fire really going, right? We're going to get the moon, so it's going to give us some power. So if you've been having some issues with energy or so forth, well, the moon in Aries will help, but it is going to be in big squares to the nodes, to Venus, to Saturn, to Pluto. We are going to get one trine to the sun, but that's it. The moon is going to be pretty stressed dealing with all this Capricorn from Thursday into Friday. So if you're not stepping up into something or you don't feel like you have a place in life, that's where you're going to feel weird. But if you feel like you have a place and you feel like you have a meaning, and even if you're Chiron and Aries doubt, like, I don't know how I fit into this, but at least like you know you're ready to show up, the universe will find a way to open the door for you, believe it or not. It's just whether or not you have the full commitment of showing up and doing something about it. Because that's what we see in Friday. We see the moon square Venus. We see the moon quincunx Mars. We see Mercury right, right before it gets out of shadow. So there is something to say. We see the sun at 14 starting to square Neptune. We start to see some panic. Or, quite opposite, the bliss that you're happy you're on a ship. That you've committed to it. And there are other ships that are going out to port right now. And so I just want to say that maybe even if you don't like the ship all the way. There might be, the, there's going to be that moment when all the ships come together and people kind of go, hey, I want to be on that ship with you and you come here, but it's all on the same mission. It's almost like if you worked at a corporation, it's like, you know what? I don't like being the asset manager. 
but I really want to be customer service. And then the asset manager's like, yeah. Or the customer service person's like, yeah, I'd rather be asset. And it's like, you'd rather be customer? Oh shit, swap. That's coming. So show up, be in the place that you want to be and show up on the boats because this is, the, this is where the treasure is going to be found. <clears throat> coming this weekend. This weekend's buried treasure. And there's tension on Friday just because we, we do want to feel Venus. But if we're not going to make a choice about something or we're not going to act on something, Aries, Capricorn, and with Mars and Quincunx, we're not going to go for it? you're going to feel left out or you're going to feel alone. These are not very fun energies, I'll be honest with you, unless you show up, unless you take the risk, unless you take action. Like People who are taking action are going to be thriving during these times. But people who are just sitting behind kind of waiting for the shoe to drop, I'd be running on those docks by now if I were you. Because Saturday is the sun square Neptune. And it's almost like a fairy tale is being born. And also it's going to reveal all the subconscious issues of where the things that are holding you back from the true position of where you need to be in your life. Because if we look at this Venus at 14, all right, it's starting to come into conjunction with Saturn. Actually, let me get rid of that for a second. Look at that. So we're within Venus-Saturn, but, you know, a lot of people associate Venus-Saturn as negative. <clears throat> Venus-Saturn with Saturn and Capricorn is like, Saturn's trying to help, like, the goddess, like, get what she wants, you know? And the sun square Neptune is, like, creating a dream, but also realizing what stuff needs to leave that isn't making the dream happen in our, what are we holding ourselves from? Where are our beliefs almost becoming a little bit too? Because remember, Neptune's dignified. It's in its home sign. The sun is not. Sun's strong and Sag, but not that strong. Not as strong as Neptune and Pisces. So Neptune and Pisces rules. And Neptune is telling the sun, like, listen, I want to make your beliefs and all these great big things happen for you, but we need to get rid of this subconscious shit. Like, one, that's not reality. That's like a dream. Two, this is a dream, but we need to show up with reality because Neptune is making a great aspect to Venus. So I'm saying these are magical stories, these are magical relationships, these are magical projects that are coming together, or you are choosing not to show up to them and you're missing it because you're going to hold yourself back or you're sitting in your house drinking or snorting Coke or I don't know, you're just not doing anything. You're like, no, don't want to do anything. And I'm just being real. Like, this is some real astrology. Like, this is not the weird stuff. And the reason why it's the buried treasure, because look at that Mercury at 27 degrees. That's when Mercury retrograde, we're out of shadow. The buried treasure, the magical story is here, or it's not. You either choose it or you don't. You either commit to it or you don't. You either go on the adventure or you don't. The moon in Aries, done with the Saturn-Pluto square. And it's ready to conjunct with this Uranus this weekend on Sunday. And it's ready to make great aspects to Jupiter. And it's really ready for the excitement of going on a better life quest. So, take it. Don't be afraid of it. Because Sunday, we're going to finish this Sun-Neptune thing. Sun 16, done with Neptune. Because remember, Neptune just did retrograde. Remember, Lilith is on Neptune. Man, look at that. While the sun finishes its square, and here's the moon in Taurus. I love moon in Taurus. It's exalted. We have a lot of strong energy around. Mars in its home sign. Going to oppose the moon in exalted. We've got, you know, Neptune dignified. We've got Saturn dignified. We've got Mars dignified. So we've got one, two, three, four... Dignified and exalted energies. And that Mercury is ready to leave Scorpio and come into Sag and go, let's look and see where this treasure map's going to take us to the buried treasure. And the moon in Taurus is all about it. Like, let's get the chests out to fill them up. 
And Jupiter is now directly at one squaring Chiron at 121 and 126. That's, a, that's, that's the peak of the square right there <clears throat> with Mercury coming out of shadow. <clears throat> so don't let any twisted identifications of life allow you to miss the benefits of taking a step or a risk towards something to go on your journey. Like pirates are typical Chiron and Aries. They look funny. They don't look like everybody else. But they're willing to go and take the risk anyway. And they really are laughing at life. The one thing I love about Jupiter and Capricorn is its dry humor. Okay? It's not cancer, you know, exalted humor. Like, oh, that was when my mom said, the cookies are, are, are burning. Ah! No, it's not that. Jupiter and Capricorn is straight up like, and then the mother ever fell off himself and he died. You know, it's like, whoa, it's cryptic, but ah, you know, like that's Jupiter and Capricorn. It talks about where somebody lost and you show her, or, you know, it usually shows where somebody, you know, you know like it's, it's just real. This is real. Why do you guys think I'm so funny? It's actually, that's not true. People don't think I'm funny. People think I'm an asshole. But the truth is, is that dry humor is hilarious. Why do you think it's off television now? <laughs> like they can't even, can't even do it anymore because everybody's so sensitive now. So this is a sensitive time for the sensitive people, and we have to be empathetic to that. And I think that this is a reminder that if you're going to hold this integrity line up so hard and miss out on what you want in life because, what, some written law or unwritten law more likely that is old and of an old system and you're afraid to be a pirate and go see what's out there? Have fun on the docks with those British people telling you what to do. They're not that funny. I really was never into Mr. Bean. He didn't make me laugh. Austin Powers did, though. So you can hang out with Austin Powers or you can hang out with Mr. Bean. You make a choice. And to me, honestly, I think Sunday, is, this weekend is one of the craziest, beautiful weekends I've ever seen. Or it's just the most feeling like you've just missed something horrible because you were afraid. I think that fear comes up with the end of Mercury and Scorpio big time and with Mars here and with Mars making aspects to, you know, Venus and Venus also making aspects to Neptune. Like this whole weekend is about making dreams possible by getting on the boat and seeing what's there and throwing out all the rest of all of your insecurities or all of these identity aspects or all of it and just knowing the path and knowing this makes sense, knowing this call to destiny. And that comfort actually is there. Because it's about a same emotional want. There's one thing to say about everybody on a pirate ship. They are laughing and having a good time and they feel like family. Family right now is people on the same quest. You've got to counterbalance the nodes. You can't just look at just cancer and be like, oh, it's about rest. Well, you can sleep on a fucking pirate ship. <laughs> and I'm sorry to say that there are no clocks on a pirate ship. There is no like, I gotta be in bed at like fucking at this time because I gotta get the, no, because at any moment a cannon might come. Boom! <laughs> Battle stations. Did you ever play Battleship? <laughs> At any moment, A6. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> found my aircraft carrier. Mars and Scorpio is getting ready to try Neptune. Mars and Scorpio is strong right now. It's getting amplified by all the Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter, and all the Capricorn shit. And remember, that's two years away where it's going to leave when it leaves. You're not going to get this much strength because next year in 2020, well, 
in less than a month. But in 2020, Mars goes retrograde in Aries, its other, dig its other dignified position. So that's going to be there for over six months, and it's going to be retrograde for three of them. It's not going to be that strong. It's going to be in squares to all that. So if you want the strongest moments of your life right now, they're right now. Because I'm going to be honest with you, next year we get Mars in Pisces. We get Mars in Aquarius with Saturn. You know, I'm just trying to show you all that now is the time to capitalize and get on this boat and start making your big choices because, like I said, the astrology is too clear. It's too clear that we are at a place to where we, the time is up. December 25th through January 12th is last, 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 last call, and we are going to go into parallel universes, people. Because I, 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 I'm going to be honest, the, mat, the mat, mystical goat... I'm going to draw it really quick again. Or you know what? We'll go back to the last slide that I drew. And you think that the boat's going to come into this ocean. This ocean is going to fly the boat into a whole other parallel universe. I know I might sound crazy, but it's going to happen. That's the whole mystical goat. The, the shortcuts in life right now are actually by just showing up and doing work and showing up and seeing and seizing positions that you know with all these gifts. Like, I'll be honest, like, being part of High Vibe, I feel blessed more than ever, and I see the opportunities of, with it, of it, and I'm putting everything I have into it because these are the opportunities that God has bestowed and blessed me and everybody around us with. It's everything. You have the same blessings around you in wherever your life is right now. Don't be afraid to be part of that, to embrace it. It will give you life. It will give you everything you need. It will give you all the comforts you need in life. Don't waste it. Don't treat it as not precious either. Because there's something to say about Capricorn. It's precious. Because it's such a trophy that it has to be in a case. Now, I have lots of trophies, but believe it or not, I've kept every single trophy in my life, including my first one, which was in the Cowabunga Kickers, five years old soccer team. I kept that one, even though I hated soccer, so I quit. When I was five years old, I looked at my mom and I said, no soccer! Running around after a ball. Last day, Monday. The sun now is not going to be making anything crazy except getting closer to Jupiter, and that means we're not going to be seeing Jupiter in the skies anymore at night. Mercury's now in Sagittarius, so we're on the quest. And I think that this is a very interesting quest because we are another 13 days in Sag at this point on Monday. We do have Mercury in Sag. We do have Mercury trining Chiron while Jupiter has finished its exact square to Chiron. So what I'm saying is like, get over your weird stuff. Get over anything of a weird identity from exactly what the gift is that's bestowed and take the risk and go towards it. With the moon in Taurus, it's going to be trining Venus. It's going to be trining Saturn. It's going to be trining Pluto. Sure, it makes that opposition to Mars for a moment, but we're going to get these really big, powerful aspects. We start next week with an excitement or a lost energy. All depending on how you play this week and how you start to play your cards and whether or not you start to show up or not. And I'm going to be honest with you, time is important in Capricorn, but what's more important is what you're doing with your time. You know, it, it reminds me, people think I'm crazy that I'll work until the middle of the night or whatever. All that matters is like, the time and how you use it and whether or not you're getting your destiny fulfilled or not. But people are living in like this identification of like how time should look. This is Jupiter and Chiron going into battle about the redefinition of what time and the belief of time should look like. We've never been through it before. So the idea of time is not the way that it used to be. And if you're still a grandma energy about, or grandpa about things,
Let me be real. Grandmas and grandpas don't get to the top of the mountain. Okay? They always stay behind and work in the cancer factory of making cookies and waiting for everybody to come back. That's the truth. There are some grandpas and grandmas that can't make it, okay? So I'm not going to say it's all of them, but I would say it's a good 90% of them. Especially for those born, and you need to realize, those born in the late 80s and early 90s have people with Saturn, people, some people have Pluto or have Uranus, and um, uh, Neptune conjunct in, in the early 90s and stuff. This stuff is hitting all that stuff. This is a generation that thinks they're grandparents, that is going to change the world, and they need to realize that they're not grandparents, and that they need to just step up. Because a grandparent steps up for so long to get the title of a grandparent, instead of acting like a grandparent and not actually stepping all the way up. And this is where this generation is going to learn the most. I know this because I'm the Sag generation. I've got Uranus and Neptune and Sag. I've been through Saturn. I've been through Jupiter. I've been through Neptune squaring all of that shit. I've already been through it. I'm here. This Capricorn thing and the Saturn return Capricorns and the Neptune Capricorns and the Uranus Capricorns. No more grandma shit. Grandpa shit. This is the moment. And actually, we can go back in time there's other people born with Saturn and Capricorn, and, but not Neptune, not, not Uranus. That was the early 90s. That early 90s was, do you think the internet's very grandma-like? The grandparents never even know how to use the internet, barely. They seized the opportunity and did something about it. They put a fucking... I don't know if you know this, but to connect the internet, there are wires that go from New York City all the way to Europe, under the ocean. That shit happened. And I guarantee you they were not grandpa about it, you know, or grandma, they were doing it. And this is where we lay the lines of life now, and we show up and be architects to our life. And it's, a lot of people think that Capricorn's about patience. Capricorn's about the patience of waiting till it finally arrives to go on the journey and take the risk. But once you're on that mountain, you need to be a little patient because you don't want to fall, but you keep moving forward because a Capricorn will die when they choose to die on their own time. But I, it's creepy to watch Capricorns get really old because they'll just keep being like, I'm not dying yet. I'm going to keep going. They'll have missing legs and shit and be crawling and still going. So I don't know about patience. I would say it's more about knowing exactly what to do, when to do it, and not missing any opportunity of when to take advantage. Because if you miss that rock, that's perfectly positioned at the moment to hit. If you miss it, it just might be that moment when the winds come and when you hit it, you fly off the mountain. So I am so excited, everybody, because this is the beginning of the quest of all of our lives and our destiny and our journey. I mean, at least there's a little bit of breathing room with the sun still in Sag. But I'm here to tell you and be harsh on you in a weird way just because at the beginning of this, you do not want to use the breathing room as a slumber with the sun square Neptune and slumber when we discover what the buried treasure is this weekend. Venus and Neptune, Mercury out of shadow, sun square Neptune, Venus and Saturn coming together, Venus and Neptune. This is the quest. I've been talking about Saturn sextile Neptune. Mercury's out of shadow. It's gung-ho. Jupiter square Chiron this weekend. Exact. Get out of all this weird identification on how you think it should look and just take the risk and go. I know it might be uncomfortable. And I know that North Node, all these North Node, South Node things confuse so many people about astrology. It's a dualistic nature. 
Of course you need your rest. Take your nap, take your sleep at night. But get up and do seize the day. This is not about cookies and milk right now. And I know that everybody, okay, it is maybe at 8 o'clock at night or midnight, whatever it is, before you fall asleep. But it definitely is not about waking up and having cookies and milk and then going and being like, I'm going to go over here. (laughs) This is definitely a time where you seize every bit of all the things and all the opportunities right now in your life because you don't want to miss it because... You can have the biggest and best quest ever and it gets you to the best position in your life ever or to me, the herd doesn't sound that great because I don't want to put my nose in somebody else's butt for the rest of my life. (laughs) That's what Saturn, Pluto with Jupiter And Capricorn is. You better be prepared. It's the rest of your life. Because if you think that all three of these are going to meet with just the South Node, no, the South Node moves out of Capricorn in May. May 4th of 2020. And we go into Gemini North Node and South Node and Sag. And guess what? That's exalted North Node in Western. And the reason why North Node and Gemini is exalted, because it's about those that know the Hermeticism, of both sides, and they don't get lost in Sagittarius, because South Node and Sag can get really lost, or especially North Node and Sag can get lost, because it starts to like, you know, over-calculate, over-think, and then it wants to explore things. Like the North Node is exalted in Gemini because it knows, it sees data, and it acts on that data. And we're going to have Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto that will be back and be at their tightest, closest point while North Node is in Gemini in the fall. So, think about the rest of your life and where it can go. And I know that might sound like that's crazy, but that's how hard the concrete was. Look at the founding fathers when Pluto was in Capricorn. Like, they created to where, for the rest of Those people's lives that lived through the Revolutionary War, it was all about the new America and that quest of building it. It was about England being like, well, I guess we are going to start losing some colonies. Shit. And it was the rest of their life. That vibe. That's how big the vibe is changing. And if you're going to play, like, think that this is a video game where you get unlimited lives. I'm sorry to say that you get three in Mario Brothers on, on regular Nintendo, which I was born playing, by the way. I'm old enough to actually remember regular Nintendo to buy. You never got to turn the game off and you never got any more lives. If you died, that was the end of the level and you started over. And that's how Capricorn works. And we're in a society today where everybody's playing the whole, like, I get as many lives as I want. I get as many this. I get as many this. But I'm really sensitive. I don't want, don't take the game from me away, mom. Uh, I don't want to go outside and be on my bicycle. I don't want to, I don't want to go. uh, 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 uh. Training wheels are off, but there's at least bumpers on the bowling alley still for a moment for the next couple, like, like the next four, four weeks. But don't uh, get too used to them and also don't start not bowling because this is the time for you to learn how to get those strikes. I love you all very much. We got After Dark next. Thank you for being a part of High Vibe. Thank you for subscribing. Those Jupiter and Capricorn videos are out. You can purchase them. Go to highvibe.tv. Go to the paid video section and check them out. Jupiter's fate is here. Brought to you by a man with Jupiter and Capricorn himself. I love you all very much. I will see you all in After Dark. I'll see you all in Every Day and all the daily content. We love all the new people here on High Vibe. Thank you for all your support. And we'll see you when we see you in the universal time that always happens every day on High Vibe. (laughs) Love you all. So this video is going to give you the tools, it's going to give you the steps, it's going to give you the questions for you to ask yourself to prepare yourself. 
It's going to give you my opinions on what best course of action to take. And you can take it or you can leave it or you can take parts of it or none of it. To me, as long as you're willing to listen, as long as you're willing to hear me and take it in and ask those questions, do you want to be in it or not? Like this is, that's what the call is. And that is, I think, the deepest part of this energy is when people start going, do I want the energy to go back to normal. You want the energy to go back to where you don't have to participate in anything anymore. And you just want to go sit back and watch the whole show. And guess what? The universe is giving you that opportunity here as the build up to 2020. But do you really want that in your life? Is that really? I mean, but I'm not saying, I mean, maybe I'm saying that because I'm somebody who feels that I don't want it. I don't want that. So I can't judge you for being in that space. But I can tell you from an astrological point of view that sure, it might feel more comfortable to be in that space, but there is gonna be something of not being fulfilled. So this video is gonna give you the tools, it's gonna to give you the steps, it's gonna give you the questions for you to ask yourself, to prepare yourself. It's gonna give you my opinions on what best course of action to take. And you can take it or you can leave it or you can take parts of it or none of it. To me, as long as you're willing to listen, as long as you're willing to hear me and take it in and ask those questions, do you wanna be in it or not? Like this is, that's what the call is. And that is, I think, the deepest part of this energy is when people start going, "Do I want the energy to go back to normal. You want the energy to go back to where you don't have to participate in anything anymore. And you just want to go sit back and watch the whole show. And guess what? The universe is giving you that opportunity here as the build up to 2020. But do you really want that in your life? Is that really? I mean, but I'm not saying, I mean, maybe I'm saying that because I'm somebody who feels that I don't want it. I don't want that. So I can't judge you for being in that space. But I can tell you from an astrological point of view that sure, it might feel more comfortable to be in that space, but there is gonna be something of not being fulfilled.